Part 2. This example illustrates how to use the double integration method to find a deflection equation for a beam with a piecewise continuous bending moment. If a simply supported beam is subjected to a concentrated load, like this, then bending moment cannot be expressed using a single equation. In this case, we need two equations to correctly represent bending moment. We need one moment equation for the left segment of the beam and another moment equation for the right segment of the beam. Since we have two moment equations, we must write two deflection equations, one for each beam segment. We use this equation to get a deflection equation for the left segment of the beam. And we use this one to get a deflection equation for the right segment of the beam. The general deflection equation is Vx equals the double integral of m over ei. Here is the expanded deflection equation for the left segment. Here is the equation for the right segment. Let's refer to this one as V1, and call this one V2. Also, let's assume EI is a constant for the entire beam. Integrating V1 twice, we get V1x equals 1 over EI times PX cubed over 8 plus C1x plus C2. Integrating V2 twice, we get V2x equals 1 over EI times PLX squared over 2 minus PX cubed over 24 plus C3x plus C4, where C1, C2, C3, and C4 are integration constants to be determined using four boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are deflection at the left end of the beam is 0, that is, V1 at 0 equals 0. Deflection at the right end of the beam is 0 that is, V2 at 4L equals 0. Slope of the elastic curve at point B must be continuous, that is, theta 1L equals theta 2L. Deflection at point B must be continuous, that is, V1L equals V2L. Since theta equals dV dx, then theta 1x equals 1 over EI times 3px squared over 8 plus C1 and theta 2 equals 1 over EI times PLX minus PX squared over 8 plus C3. Here are the four boundary equations altogether. If we solve them simultaneously for the constants, we get C1 equals negative 7PL squared over 8. C2 equals 0. C3 equals negative 11PL squared over 8. C4 equals PL cubed over 6. Therefore, the deflection equations can be written as V1 equals 1 over EI times PX cubed over 8 minus 7 over 8 times PL squared X. V2 equals 1 over EI times PLX squared over 2 minus PX cubed over 24 minus 11 PL squared X over 8 plus PL cubed over 6. Let's see how these functions look graphically. The graph of V1 looks like this. The graph of V2 looks like this. Keep in mind that V1 is valid only for the left segment of the beam. The equation should not be used for calculating deflection in the right segment. Similarly, V2 works only for the right segment. So the correct elastic curve for the beam looks like this. This part of the curve is drawn using V1, and this part is drawn using V2. Now, suppose we are asked to determine the location of maximum deflection in the beam. We can do this visually by inspecting the graph of the elastic curve, or we can do it more accurately, algebraically, using equations V1 and V2. More specifically, we know that at the point of maximum deflection, slope of the elastic curve is zero. Here is the slope function for the left segment of the beam. 
and here is the slope function for the right segment of the beam. Maximum deflection occurs either in the left segment or in the right segment. If it occurs in the left segment, then the point of maximum deflection must be located between 0 and L. To decide if this is true, we set theta 1 equal to 0, then solve for x. If we get a value between 0 and L, then we have indeed located the point of maximum deflection in the left segment. Otherwise, maximum deflection occurs in the right segment. So, setting theta 1 equal to 0, we get x approximately equals to 1.53 L. Since this point is not between 0 and L, then maximum deflection does not occur in the left segment. Therefore, it must occur in the right segment. Let's see if this is true. At what x value is theta 2 0? Solving this equation for x, we get x equals 1.75 L. Since this value is between L and 4 L, then we conclude that maximum deflection in the beam occurs in the right segment of the beam, at x equals 1.75 L. Now, we can determine the value of maximum deflection by evaluating V2 at this point.